Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias. Young Nigerians in Africa, around Africa, are beginning to make a call for a change of guard on how the affairs of this country and continent is being run. A number of these youths gathered to chart a course on how to end all wars on the continent, silence all guns by 2020, and also be part of the policy-making machinery in the continent. On the program today, we'll be speaking to some of these youths to find out how they intend to achieve this task. But just before joining them, let's go through the trending searches on Google in the past week. Synagogue Church of All Nations The Synagogue Church of All Nations overseen by Prophet T.B. Joshua was in the news this week not for mysterious healing sessions, but for the collapse of a guest house within its premises, which killed many. This collapse made the church to be the first on the list of top searches. Diego Costa Diego Costa became the first player to score seven goals in the opening four games in the English Premier League, and that got Nigerians googling to be sure if their favorite Premier League strikers were not being overlooked by the history books. Also, mutineering soldiers sentenced to death, the UEFA Champions League, and Victor Moses also got Nigerians asking some questions on Google. Well, those were the major searches. Let's now hear from our online contributors. It's just a way for us to be able to classify a, um, a population, but let's not forget that this is not a mono reality. Young people, there are young people that are doctors, there are young people that are sex workers, there are young people that are that, that are lawyers, we have different realities. There are young people that are responsible, there are young people that are irresponsible. But to make change happen in this population, we have to start with the parts that we can control. The parts that we can control are the responsible ones, are the ones that are committed to change, are the ones that see beyond their daily needs, are the, are the ones that are privileged enough to have been to school, privileged enough to know what the issues are. If we don't deal with the ones that we can control, we would have no business even being able to influence the ones that we cannot control. So. We start with these ones and then eventually hope that the message, the activities and the works that these other ones that we can control do get to inspire the change that we want amongst the ones that we have no control and we don't have direct control over. One of the first things I intend to do is to ensure that when I go back to my country, I empower my fellow young people on all the great lessons that I've acquired during the past three days at this pre-forum on DG Trends. Uh, first of all, to empower young people in my country about what is DG Trends, what it represents, and all that um, uh, it, it encompasses, and um, our contributions as young people, and how we can take part and engage in meaningful dialogue with our leaders in terms of holding them accountable for commitments we have made in terms of achieving democracy um, uh, free elections, especially looking at that um, the fact that in Botswana next month uh, we are going to be going to elections and we have a serious problem with voter apathy. Um, and I want to empower them that, um, because the, the, the biggest problem we currently have in Africa is that of um, young people who are ignorant and lack information uh, that could help us in infusing and imparting uh, the, the, the kind of change and development we want to see in our continent. So I believe in activists and advocate young people. And then the last bit of it is that um, realizing the demographic weight of us as young people in Africa, we account to about between 60 and 70 percent of the population of Africa. Um, they say they strengthen numbers. And as young people, it's high time we use that demographic weight as power to be able to influence the kind of change that we want. And also, we've been really um, uh, uh, advantaged, the young people of the generation because we have modern and advanced technology that makes it easier for information dissemination, for empowerment, for lobbying, advocacy purposes. It's just that we need to, to use the, the resources available to us as young people of this generation to, um, to, to best work for us and our advocacy and ensuring that we get the change that we want to see in our respective countries and um, in the continent at large. At, at the moment, I work at the African Union Commission. Uh, I actually play the lead role uh, in ensuring that we have young people play a more pivotal role in the work that we do at the Department of Political Affairs, particularly on the African governance architecture, uh, on the work that we do in strengthening and improving the democratic governance of the continent. One of the ways that we have been doing that Botswana, Ethiopia, Egypt or uh, Algeria is that we ensure that we provide the young people 
uh, the platform to be able to improve and influence and impart on policy making at the regional and continental level. One of the ways to do that is to ensure that we provide to them the tools, particularly instruments that the African heads of state in their various uh, summits over the last 50 years have signed on to as commitment to improving democracy on the continent. So all these instruments, whether they are the African Charter on Democratic Elections and Governance, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the African Charter on the Principles and Values of Public Service, we put this information at the fingertips of young people so that they can be able to make the right demand on their government in their respective countries. So for us, the DigiTrend is one of the ways that we think we can bring uh, non-state actors into the uh, open field of policy making at the continental level. And we tend to do this working with young people uh, at several levels, whether it's at the national, the regional, and of course at the continental level. So this is one of our continental uh, initiatives, and we expect that participants we, we have drawn from over 40 countries all over the continent are able to go back home more informed and use their mobilization capacity, at their capacity as uh, heads of organizations in their respective countries to impact the work that they do. The fact that these agreements are there are a kind of beginning to get something started. Um, sometimes they have to plow this is just for political reasons or for some other reason. How can young people be directly involved? I think we've started already by having this conversation. Um, we reached over 42, apart from the fact that we have um, people from about 40, over 40 countries here, physically in, in, um, um, in Kenya, we also reached over 42 people via social media, um, five continents. We cannot make change happen without conversations. So young people have started these conversations. Um, eventually would have to commit to some of the things that have to do with what we have to do as young people, which of course includes um, being responsible for what we do, what we say, being consciously pan-African, um, engaging other young people who do not know anything about these conversations, um, in, in, increasing the relationships between um, um, amongst us as young people in individual countries and then inter-country relationships, because if people do not have relationships, um, tribal relationships, they, they tend to have disagreements that arise from not um, interacting. So that's, that's what we're doing. But the, the first things first, we're having the conversation. And I think from the conversation, we can begin to commit to doing um, actionable points that we agree on and that we would eventually also agree on as time goes on. We come from different backgrounds, but it's important to realize that uh, youth priorities are a matter. And given that demographic weight in the, in the continent, they should be at the center and at the heart of every development agenda that is being set. And also just to add on to what he was saying earlier on about the human rights commitments and treaties that our countries and our leaders have committed themselves to, I'd say we've reached a point right now in the world where we have so many of these paperwork and there is less implementation less enforcement and less action. Perhaps now is, more, uh, is the time when um, we call for action um, oriented initiatives, we call for the implementation and enforcement of um, of these human rights treaties. Another element to look at this is that uh, perhaps some leaders look at these human rights treaties and commitments and say that, that they are perhaps not binding to them uh, to, to, to fulfill completely. And that is a point of advocacy for us as young people to ensure that we advocate for these uh, human rights commitments to be domesticated. Why? Because when they are domesticated and localized into laws and are enshrined in the statutes of our respective countries and constitutions, it will be easier for us as young and people to hold our leaders accountable for achieving them. So it's important that beyond the signing and the ratification of these commitments, they are also domesticated to enable us to hold our countries accountable for them and also for um, our leaders to ensure that they implement and enforce them at all levels.